This is Talk of the Nation. I'm Lee Cohen in Washington. At some point, almost everybody's touched by music. Why does music have such power over our emotions? Why is it universal across all cultures? Does music provide some evolutionary advantage? Is music uniquely human, or do we share it with other animals? Is it hardwired? Did it come before language, and can music make us happy? Random, parking my car on the second floor in the parking structure on State Street, and I happen to have this guitar. I happen to have my little amplifier that runs on a battery, and I noticed the concrete, and I said to myself, I bet I could play cranked up really loud for at least 10 minutes before they stop me. And I think that would be worth it. So I did it. And that was 12 years ago. I was walking down State Street and I was like, wait a minute, there's guitar music coming from somewhere. <laughs> no one could find him. No one knew where he was. It was just this music that came out of the parking garage. I started to hear this sound wafting through uh, that second floor going, what is this? This is something special. It was starting to become this iconic, hey, do you, do you, when you're in Santa Barbara, do you ever hear that guy playing the guitar? Where is he? There's been times when I've taken, left my amplifier where it is on the second floor of the parking structure and I've gone all the way across the street and played from there. And I've actually been able to, well, hear, my, hear the sound that you would hear. And I get to see the puzzled people looking around, look at me with no idea, it's really me playing. And the best time of all, I think, was when I was playing right underneath the 
on the, I was on the sidewalk right below it, playing that same game, and this little old man comes up to me and says, the guy up there, he's better than you. <laughs> <laughs> My day job is a night job. Um, RN, I work in the intensive care unit, the ICU at uh, Cottage Hospital. It's the most fascinating job I've ever had, and it's, it's, it's hard work, but it, it's powerful. It's life or death and comfort. Um, a lot of elements to it. It's the opposite of playing guitar. It's very different. When I'm at work, the mind's always buzzing. You can see all us nurses, we, our mouths are moving with numbers that we're trying to remember, you know, how many micrograms per kilo. And you have to be aware of all these things at once. Uh, so it's quite a head game in that regard. In addition to physical, you have to be very careful with some things so you don't hurt somebody. What he experiences in his professional life, if you don't have a release, you will go crazy. You'll go absolutely nuts. And he's found a release. When I'm playing the guitar, I try to shut my brain off. My mind can do what it wants. And um, it can go to really good places. It's never been black and white. Some of the things about it are black and white, beautiful, like the sound, the parking. It's fantastic. A little bit of fear, maybe, after midnight downtown. You never know what's going to happen. It's not exactly comfortable, but I did want to be playing for people. And sometimes I really like playing for people. It's not like there's a nice place for my audience. But then, every once in a while, somebody comes up and, and they are, there's something about maybe where it is or what it is. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it, it gets to them and, and they, the things that they say make me want to come back and make me happy I come that night. So I'm a mutt, I'm not trained, uh, I'm not such a great player. I know this tiny much how to play and there's this much that I would love to be able to play. I wish there was more time. I think if I were to, <laughs> he's going he's gonna to whack me for saying this. I think if I were to define Bruce, it would be the Gypsy Kings meet Willie Nelson on the way to a punk rock show. You know, it, he's just, there's devil may care attitude, just crazy fun guitar work, uh, just as loud and brash as you can get it but gorgeous music all at the same time. And it, it's, it, 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 he's definitely his own, his own dude, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> that big a presence on earth so it's uh, when somebody does say you help me through a bad night or you just or I see <laughs> last night when I was playing when a couple just stopped and started hanging on to each other and smooching and I thought I did that <laughs> um, that keeps me coming back
it was our first date and I was so moved by our whole date and then to have it caps encapsulated with Bruce Goldish, I felt like the world was conspiring in my favor and I looked over at Kevin and I said, it's too bad they don't have a mattress here. <laughs> We're here to hear Bruce play, so happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> So there's a new guy driving through in the truck and he just said, um, basically I'm gonna enforce the, the rules. And I tried to explain like, because maybe he was brand new, like I've been doing this a while and people don't tend to care. Anyway, he didn't really listen and he, he in fact called the cops. And um, they came up and, and, and literally said, we've been fans of yours for five years and we don't wanna do this. so." Can you work something out? But in the meantime, I had to go. It was one night he came home early and said that someone had told him he couldn't play there anymore and he was devastated. I read in the paper that, that for some, not a very good reason at all, he wasn't able to play in that particular garage. It was uh, a shock to our community. Yeah and really unnecessary. It was just one of those little wonderful things, one of those little petals in the flower of Santa Barbara that somebody plucked off for no reason. And it was like, come on, don't be, you got other issues to deal with. And that was it, I thought. And um, yeah, it really hurt. I mean, I, I don't analyze what I do there, but I know it's got a huge impact on me. I really look, I'm like a puppy looking forward to playing every time I go there. I arrange to make time to go there and, and get all my equipment all ready. I, more than a gig sometimes. Um, so it was, uh, it was a big hole in my belly after that happened. He's usually a person who wakes up singing usually singing to me or dancing or whatever. <laughs> so this is part of who he is. Um, yeah, that's the one thing you don't want to take away from him that, that brings him, it makes him a better person. When I heard that Bruce got kicked out, I didn't feel so much bad for Bruce because I know he'd find somewhere else to play. I felt bad for the people on State Street, and especially during the winter time when it was kind of a little bit rainy and, you know, his music would be just going all up and down State Street. It was like this wonderful aesthetic thing. And I felt bad for the people who were gonna miss out on that art. It was over, and so I just went on Facebook and said, wrote a little note, goodbye, parking lot nine. And thank, thank you people for being so nice. The Facebook post was such a thoughtful, he's such an amazing writer, and so the way he was able to put it down on, in words that, you know, I'll miss you, and this was an amazing place, thank you. I think it really touched people. I, I think some people must have talked to the city as well. I was shocked. I saw that on, on Facebook and I thought, well, that's kind of strange. <laughs> There's a lot going on in Santa Barbara that needs law enforcement participation, and I really didn't think that Bruce was one of those people that needed law enforcement corralling. I mean, I signed the petition, I wrote Facebook posts, I did everything because this town is better because of Bruce. And then the whole community said, hey, you gotta let Bruce play. What the hell do you think you're doing? He was so amazed at the amount of people that got back to him saying, we love your music. It was kind of, um, it was kind of weird. It was kind of like not an obituary, but it was, you know, when someone's died and people say things about you. So it was amazing that he was still alive to hear the difference he made in people's lives. Seeing these posts, I mean, there was thousands. You couldn't keep up with it. Um, it was a movement. Yeah, it was a movement. It was a Santa Barbara movement to keep him there. Yeah. Which is really cool. It was a testament to the power of people being vocal about something I don't know how many calls went into the city council offices and city council members' offices. I know there was quite a few, and it was, it was on repeat dial. Hey, you know, enough. To this day, I, I really don't know what happened exactly, other than that a lot of people 
read that post and shared it and um and somebody talked to somebody in the government maybe i don't know it, it just what what i what i ended up seeing was um getting a phone call from from the government saying we're we're, we're putting our lawyers together and we're going to make you a permit so you can play there again i don't feel like it took that long for them to say no this is right he needs to be here never dreamed for a second that a government could be human enough to to actually go out of their way to create a permit for something like this. So that was a little miracle. I don't take any minute for granted when I play there and I try to get as much out of it as I can. Business as usual now, but but it feels a little different. I'm I'm free. I'm a citizen. It's, I'm not a I'm not an outlaw doing this. It's kind of nice to know because I love this city a lot. I came here on purpose because because I, I love the city, and so I, I get an extra kick when when they associate my stuff with Santa Barbara. You made Santa Barbara better. In my guest book, I have notes that come up every once in a while that say. I've been listening to you for 10 years since I was 10 years old, and, and that's big. A lot of times people will ask me where I play, and, and I play a variety pack of places. I play on um, at restaurants or, or festival occasionally and things like that, but the big thing in my heart is, is the parking structure. Um, that's kind of my way of life now. So just to be honest, I'll, usually, I'll tell them I play in a parking lot. And I know it's, I'm aware that could sound really creepy if they have no idea what I'm talking about. But it's also self-explanatory if they've heard it. The sound of his guitar in that empty parking structure at night is, it's like playing in St. Patrick's Cathedral with oil stains. You know, the, 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 the sound is just massive. Doesn't look good on a resume. I don't talk to people much when I play. Uh, it's, uh, I don't encourage it, really. I'm there to play. People can write what they want. So I really value that because it's a no pressure thing. It's not saying, write something good about me or, or something like that. So it, I tend to think it's always sincere. If they hate it, they could say they hate it. But in, in fact, since uh, like 2005, when I started putting that out, nobody's ever literally ever said a bad word. I mean, there's been crazy words, word salad and all, but, um, but there's things that, I'm not a crier, but it, this made me cry. So the permit says I, I should play after eight o'clock and I used to start at like five. And I, so it used to be, I would play from five to one, It'd be like a typical without stopping. Uh, and. Once, just for, just for yucks, I went for the record. How long could I do this without stopping? And it was 13 hours. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, and, and I'm gonna be honest, it wasn't really that fun. It hurt, <laughs> but I was just going for the record. And then there's, every time I go there, there's always part of me too that in my head is, you know, what are you doing here? What, what are you, a loser? folks. My mom really taught me a lot about getting the most out of things or getting uh, beauty out of, out of ugly places. She, like she would, she'd find dead things, dead leaves, and she'd take this dead leaf and she'd go like a little girl, she'd go, ooh, look at that, and she'd point out how the little veins and the colors, and, and she'd talk about it like it had a little lifetime, and, um, and it would be this magical thing and not this thing that you step on. And it's sort of like that with the parking structure. 